<laughs> Mate, I just cast it out. About three metres ahead of the school, they swam into it, and I popped it twice, and it just went crunch. Look at them just here. Now we're coming together. The fish are trying to get back together. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Keep your rod where it is now. That's it. Keep your rod where it is now. I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. Oh, this one. Have a look at them on the off the off the bow. We've got a little bit of an issue at the moment that sometimes when you hook school fish, big school fish, they tend to like hanging out together. What they will sometimes do is try to come back to regroup. And when you are fishing with braid, there can be a bit of an issue because braid does come together and wrap, it cuts itself so quickly. So if you are, and once again, it's a benefit of using braid that you can see. Adrian's got a nice yellow braid, I've got a nice visual red braid, so we can see where those are on the water. It means we can guide our fish different directions. Powerful fish. What we do at the moment, we're using a lot of rod angle just to try and keep these fish coming back towards us. Uh, it's in shallow water, they run quick. You just don't want to panic too much. Use your rod, it's your shock absorber. Oh, so she's got to slap eventually. It takes some doing these fish in the shallows. You know, we, we're chasing four to, well, we're hooked up with four to six kilo fish at the moment, and on 10 pound braid, four to six kilo rods, they take some doing, but it's one of the beauties of coming and chasing fish over the flats, is that the great sport, the visual aspect's amazing. I don't think you can beat it, being able to see fish, target them, put a lure in front of them, see them eat it, and then watch them run off while your drag screams. I think it's nearly as good as spin fishing can get. We're just working our rods at the moment to keep these guys apart. Oh, it's big head shakes, they're powerful fish. Big bands are coming oh, through. Oh, look at this. Catching these fish, uh, they're impressive sports fish, but catching them was relatively simple. We were really just using our eyes and cruising over the shallows to find patches of feeding fish. And they were able to spot a group of fish. Tails were flicking up out of the water. It was a big patch of fish. You could spot them easily because we've got Polaroid sunglasses on our heads, which makes the job so much easier. And then it was a case of working out which direction those fish were going. We cast a little soft plastic ahead of them so that we didn't spook them. And as they got within range of it, we just gave it a slightest little hop and you could see the whole chemistry of that group changed. They knew food was on the order and they all charged in and basically Adrian and I went, oh, both hooked up very quickly. And we're now getting tired. Big fella starting to puff, I can hear him. I'm gonna help you tail that while I keep this one in the water, Adrian. Just wear him out first. I mean, the beauty of what we're doing here today is that these flats that we're fishing, or when I talk about flats, I mean the shallow water. These flats are full of brim, flathead, whiting, and we've got different outfits ready to chase whatever we see. The beauty, we obviously come up to Harvey Bay with a good mate of mine, Adrian Lindsay, and the beauty about Harvey Bay is that in amongst those brim, whiting, and flathead, you also get some other speedsters like Golden Trevally, Giant Trevally, Diamonds, and all those other critters. So uh, these, these techniques of just hopping plastics in front of fish that you can see in the shallows, you can use as much on your flathead, brim, and whiting as you can on these guys, and it's all good fun. Oh, look at that there. There's golden still swimming around the boat. Mine's just got angry again. Okay, you bring yours here. This is what happens when you've got two blokes in a boat and you get a double hook up. This is what we came here for, Goldens on the flats of Harvey Bay. What I did was, we saw the fish schooling up, we cast three metres in front of them, double hop, and they just climbed all over it and it was game on. Lives to fight another day. The big key when you're chasing big fish on the flats is not to panic. There's not a lot of sharp stuff they can often do on the flats, and I think sometimes people get a bit panicky when they've got a big fish that's taking line quickly is to go a little bit hard on it. But if you can go gently, just wear these fish down, you'll win a lot of your battles. Oh, that's just an awesome fish. Little three inch plastic. A lot of these fish were up in the shallows, and there's, not, there's a, one big reason that fish are gonna risk getting eaten to come up into shallow water. It's because there's lots of food there. They know they're coming up there to get a good feed. 
and particularly you'll find lots of shallows include areas where there's worm beds and yabby beds. So there's a reason today that we're using soft plastics that look a bit shrimpy and a bit yabby. So they've got lots of little legs hanging off them is because they're probably going to look a lot like the food source that these guys are up here eating. And I guess the, the evidence so far is that we're probably matching what they're, they're eating. A lot of anglers travel a long way to come and catch big fish on the flats like goldens and permit and other species of trevally and queenfish. You know, the fly guys love it, but you can also get into it with the spin gear. You don't have to necessarily, if you're not confident with the fly side of things, you're still in the game because with a light spin gear and chucking soft plastics or, or other artificials, you can still get involved in some great sight fishing. Oh, heavy fish. These fish are good five, six kilo fish, which on four to six kilo rods, 10 pound braid, and I think I've got a 10 pound leader actually downsized overnight. So I thought, well, fish might be a bit shy this morning with a bright sunlit day, not a lot of wind. Sometimes if you, the fish are spooky, you're not necessarily getting the bites. Sometimes going slightly lighter in your leader can get those fish to bite when they might not otherwise do it. Oh. That sucks. Today we're using TT's quarter ounce jig head in a 3.0 heavy gauge hook with the new Z-Man shrimps in 3 inch. Rigging a plastic is important because watching it swim through the water you're trying to imitate a bait fish. I'll basically show you quickly how to do it now. All I'm doing is measuring the distance where I want the hook to protrude out. You're taking it in through the top, beating it through to where you measured bringing it out. There we are guys, a nicely rigged Z-Man shrimp plastic. There, there, there. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Cast up here. Let me go. Okay, we're on. You go first. We're on. Yep, yep. <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> I'm joking on it. Yeah, and I'll just come straight in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah, got him. Got him interested. Got him interested. I'll just catch up to him. Don't leave it. Fun. A big part of getting this retrieve right is to make the lure choice look like a wounded part of the diet that these guys are up here eating. To do that, you've got to put your lure far enough ahead of them. If you land it too close to them and they get any sign that there's a splash or something not right, you tend to find that you'll spook these fish. So try and pick up the direction they're going in, and that's the benefit in using good eyewear to spot these fish, see which way they're going, and then plan your attack. Get a good cast. I like to put it three to ten meters ahead of the fish, and so it's sitting there stationary on the bottom before they get somewhere near it and then with it when they're within that metre mark give it that little twitch then it looks like they've startled some part of the, the diet and they're straight onto it and then their body language tells you basically when to strike a lot of times we're not really feeling that bite we're just seeing that that fish suddenly charge onto your plastic they quiver sometimes their fins go up and you can almost guess that they've got it in that case we're striking and as you can see i think our timing's not too far out today adrian no, we're coming home with a few home runs we are it's not much fun, I'd much rather be at work. I would much rather be at work. Oh. One of the best tools we're using today is the Spotter's photochromatic lens. Now what this lens does is it darkens and lightens to prevailing light conditions. So today, beautiful hot sunny day, the UV light is that strong that it will then darken your lens. If cloud cover comes over, your UV light is less, your lens will lighten. So this lens is always enhancing your vision. Other advantage of this, of the uh, penetrator lens, is that it filters up to 92% of visible blue light. Now in the light spectrum, the blue light is not absorbed by the human eye. It sits on the retina, hence it causes your eye fatigue, your eye strain and your headache. So this vaporizes glare and allows us to penetrate into the water to see these schooling fish. 
There's a reason I've got you to say that, because I can't say that big photo, whatever word you said it was. <laughs> Photochromatic. Photochromatic yeah, lens. Such a sensational lens. The next time you're looking for a good fishing lens, Photochromatic from Spotters. There you go, mate. We're certainly paying the dividends glass today. Lens. A big part of fishing the flats is sometimes timing your run. By that I mean working out when you want to most fish the flats, and it stands to reason that there's a pretty good rule to follow in terms of the way Adrian and I usually approach it anyway, and it's that it's that running tide where the fish are going to want to get up over those flats, get to new areas of water that they can't otherwise get to. When they can get up into those areas, they're most likely to be up there feeding. And tends to, what we typically find anyway is that when you do find fish in the shallow water, they are usually feeding. It's up to you then just to use some good angling to try and catch those, but time your tides, try and get that from the start of that running up to the top of the tide, you're most likely to find your fish up in the flats and happily feeding. Oh, oh no, it's going on here. Something started, something started chasing him. Oh, get up in here. Oh no, there's a big shark on him. Yep. Oh. Oh no. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh no, he's trying to hide with him. My fish has just found a, is it a jugal or something like that? Look at Jugi. My fish has just found some cover in a, a jugal. Look at him. <laughs> That's bizarre. These days we've certainly got the tools of the trade to help us with this style of fishing. We've got things like electrics that are remote driven. You can put them into autopilot, but you can sit there and basically I can just control this boat. So if I was out here fishing on my own, I could basically sit out here, I can do the whole thing on my own. I can spot these fish, I can catch them, I can control the boat to wherever I want to be. Fishing is just getting so much easier these days. It's, a, it's just a pleasure. see that these guys are just made to fish on the flats. They've got these big rubbery lips which they protrude. You can see this big snub nose that he's got. He's made for just coming up on those flats, chucking that nose in there and, and sifting around and chasing out food items. And then as soon as they come out, that big mouth opens and he sucks it in. <laughs> the beautiful golden trevally caught on the flats. Hopping little Z-Man plastics, spotted from way to go, and it's an adrenaline rush. You've got to get out and do this at some stage. We're getting back in the water. Okay, cast, long cast over there. Long cast there. Long cast, long cast. Perfect, perfect. Wait, wait on it, wait on it, wait on it. Twitch it. Twitch it, leave it, leave it. Yep, you're on. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> How good's that? It's Bill Classen here from The Fishing Show, and if you like this instructional video and want to learn more, it's simple. Go to fishingshowtv.com.au and see a whole host of additional videos.